Hey, don't know you found me, but it's me, Van, and welcome to Stillwater. Stillwater is a horror mystery visual novel where we follow a private detective who takes on a strange case. The art direction for this already looks incredible, and um, I'm very, very excited to see what, what's going on here. Without further ado, let's begin. This is a work of fiction. The resemblance to any real-life people is purely coincidental. This game contains depictions of horror, mature themes, violence, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you for the warning. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down, if we can just talk it out. So many strange things keep happening after another. Every day there's this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but... I check every faucet, every ceiling, every pipeline, and still... Still, I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ear. Oh, but the water... I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. Damn, Nina has nothing to say. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk. And they walk. Upstairs, then downstairs. And upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs. And, downstairs and, downstairs. and it goes on and on and on and on like that! But somehow, it comes to an end, and it ends, all in front of your grandfather's room. Oh, oh, okay, okay, related, related. I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Something terrible is lurking through this home. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. <laughs> can't just leave. That's my home. Please, Nina. This place, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like that. It's my home. It's my home. Diner, 7 a.m. Amid a foggy morning, there sits a man by the corner of a booth. He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. Wow. And today, it was just black coffee. Oh dear. Aww. <laughs> He's cute. Ugh. I swear, I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. A freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. My foot? I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Ah. Uh. Hugo Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hugo, you're 30? Oh my. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need to find a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out toward the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run for my fate, I guess. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. 
Wait. This music? Oh. Ooh. Give me a sec. I just need to- I just need to sit for a second. Oof. That's so good. That's so delicious. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things come with a price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Sounds rough. Mind if I join? Oh no. An annoyingly familiar face interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. <gasps> Hello? Hugo. Hugo, you're cute. But... Whoever this is? <laughs> oh me, oh my. You know, I thought this was a horror game, but I don't know. It's pretty- it's looking pretty tasty so far. Good morning, Hugo. <laughs> oh, they're- they're great. They're great friends. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. He greets the waitress but pass- oh my god. I am so distracted by this man. <laughs> He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the Hefty Body Breakfast Special. With an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to relay his order. The man then looks at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbled newspaper clippings, all the while Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today? I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little. There is a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. He's so kind. So thoughtful. Two? Oh, that looks so good. As if the world would grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Why the hell did he order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat. Don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious. Right, Hugo? Are you even listening to me? Come on. We both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will. And I'm not about to let you faint again. So, open wide. Noah De Leon, age 27, a natural-born charmer, is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. That a boy. <sighs> it's good. Right? Good food will always help cheer you up. Damn him. I got swept away again. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Hmm, yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean... She did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? You could just rest for the day. And pass up this opportunity to get to know you better? Quit it. 
After their enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo's car. Their dynamic's very cute, yes. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. <gasps> it's just a good boy. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Ah, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Colby? At the sound of his name, his heavy-lidded eyes slowly peek to see who calls for him. It is his one and only partner, his human. <gasps> As if finally realizing who he is or where he is, the bloodhound stirs up from his sleep, pounces at Hugo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Dogs are so cute. Bark. Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap? Colby. Eight years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. Has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. That's so cute. Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the backseat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. Yeah, you can't compete with a cute dog, I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I try. When it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Agency, 7.50 a.m. The three headed back to the office. The space just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organized mess. To his credit, for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albert could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks... less crowded. Ah, oh, shut it, will you? I said I was gonna get to it. Thanks, boy. They're so... ugh, they're so cute. Oh man, I did not mean to... Is it ever really a van playthrough if I don't accidentally skip one line of dialogue? Oh dear. Anyway... A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the storefront. The woman appears a bit frantic. Disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. I... I am so sorry. I know that the clothes sign is up, but I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help! My grandfather, he... Before she can continue, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay. We'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing in relief. She then walks toward the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can you start off by telling us your name? I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. <sighs> Miss Mortimer. If that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No! I've tried requesting their help, but all they give me is the same answer. There's nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Lewis was. Lewis? Nina fidgets at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. My grandfather. He received a cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. Well, that was an abrupt cutoff. As she hands over the letter, Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. At first glance, it seems like any normal written message. A person named Lewis asking the other... Wait, is this... Is it actually Louis? I apologize in advance if it's meant to be pronounced Louis. I'll, I'll just keep saying Louis because that's kind of what I went with, but uh, yeah. 
a person named Lewis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am coming for you, Henry. Are there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one, this one was different. Up until now, I've never heard anyone by that name. Not a relative or a family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I'll lose. I'll lose him too. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Hiding away her tear-streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissues for her. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this Lewis person is, they're coming. Do you want more tissues? I'll do it. I'll take on your case. For a moment, silence fills the room. Only stares are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks toward him. You'll... you'll take it? Hugo simply nods. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. We're glad to help, miss. Oh, look at his smile. He's so cute. Oh my god. He is so tender. Nina. Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. This is my address. I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. She politely bows once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later again. Car, 5.30 p.m. Oh no, we're doing this at night? Oh, dear heaven. From the ongoing downpour to the quiet homes of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rearview mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. He looks out to the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Oh, what's up? Yeah. Hey, you're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? Huh, this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. You just usually talk a lot, that's all. So you do miss me talking a lot. Just say it. I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Huh. Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been stuck with so many tragedies that over time people began to believe they were cursed or something. Oh, it's this sort of thing. Every other year I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they'd perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. Think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Ugh. Besides, two are better than one. Exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. Damn. <laughs> Damn, Hugo. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? Ugh. Aw, oh, come on. Mortimer's state, 6 p.m. We're doing this at night. That's that's awesome. 
It's, it's great. Passing through countless dirt roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. It's very pretty. Nestled and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they parked adjacent to Nina's car. Wow. And to think she came all this way just to request us? It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Maybe she didn't really have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Uh. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. No, no, no. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. Oh no. His gaze hazes as he leans close to the car. Like a fish drawn out from sea, he desperately heaves. But this ache he harbors pales in comparison to a pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No. Something far more sinister. He feels it. Someone is watching him. A piercing gaze fixed on him, like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. What the hell? Damn it, already? I need to hurry or else... Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated, fixated trance. My bad. Colby nudges his head against Hugo, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice. It was so close to my ear, I... Is everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit winded out from the trip, that's all. I'd be happy to make you coffee at the very least. If it's no trouble. No, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, the subtle uneasiness from Nina surfaces. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off toward the front porch without seeing another word. Are you sure you're alright? You sounded like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. I think you should... Noah abruptly cuts his lecture shirt as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently as if contemplating something. I... I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. His assistant, Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah de Leon. <sighs> Seems so surreal. Just like a cartoon. <laughs> Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I, I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Lauren. Just like before, as of carefully choosing her next words, she decides that in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourselves what I mean. Oh dear. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three to follow behind. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer when he feels a tug on his arm. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. See, he, he's worried about you, and he genuinely cares. You should, you should be a little kinder. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo notes that the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, it exudes an elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. Resplendent? Oh dear. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than the splendor. This house is much more terrifying inside than out. Please, come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. 
Grandfather, we have guests. Oh. Mm, I don't know how to feel about this. Sitting on the armchair is a young man. He is dressed in a white collared down dress shirt, tucked in with black slacks and black penny loafers. Okay. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. Still, motionless, like a doll. Grandpa! These are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Florent and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Okay, Henry, okay. Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. Yeah. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them. And yet, here he remains, forever unchanging. Forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? The young man still does not reply back. Never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room. Only fixed on the rain. Okay, there, there's that water again. The water. I'll be sure to make a cup for you, too. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer. Bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all-too-familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes. They're similar to his own. Mmm, mmm, I... Mmm... I don't like that either. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. Nina, that man. Yes, he's my grandfather. The one I asked you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but... Nina draws something out from her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slicked back hair wearing a luxurious suit. He appears to be poison refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he's the same person. Then why does he look so... young? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud come from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him up, but when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing to my head, and yet... He felt so... He felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. And his face... I recognized his face. He just looked younger. Me too, Hugo. This is a... This is a lot to process. That was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him. Already opened. Hmm. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this. Maybe my family really is cursed. They're not. Curses aren't real. Detective? I think we easily get too involved in believing that sort of thing exists. In reality, the ones who fixate on it feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you, and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now our first priority is to find out more about Lewis. 
Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you have it with you? Ah, uh, yes, it's here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. I'll check upstairs, Noah. You and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in, close enough for Nina not to hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. I love- I, I love Hugo's smile. It's so, um, I don't know, it feels so goofy almost. But like in a, a very cute, endearing way. And he's also very slouched. I don't know, it's something about his character design is very cute. Very disheveled, but cute. And with that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. Mortimer Estate, 11.30pm. Damn! We've been here for a while. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Hugo walks toward the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From custom drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes that extravagance. But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is moldering despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here for too long. You and me both. Mortimer Estate, 11.50pm. Oh. He searches and searches, with still no sign of anything. <laughs> He's scavenging. Not one thing pertaining to Lewis. Damn it! Nothing? It's as if he cleared out everything. Just blank everywhere. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is the only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I've overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no foreboding threat at the bottom of the page, it just looks like a regular letter. What the? If you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dreary, after all. Ah, uh, but if I can ask for one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Lewis. Oh. Okay, interesting. They were lovers. This is the same Lewis? I thought he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. What do you mean you don't understand? It's clear. There was some sort of... Unrequited love. Without warning, the sound of a click hand can be heard across the bedroom. As if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees at the foot of the bed a chest. And he thinks to himself, Wait a minute, this isn't a RPG game. Why are certain things opening other things and making a little clicky sound that lets me know exactly where to go? Very odd. Hugo turns around and sees at the foot of the bed a chest. Unlike the other furniture, its dark and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Preparing himself, he opens the chest. Oh, am I meant to save here? I don't know if I did that on accident or not. Inside, scrambled together, are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. Yeah, I think I did that on accident. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. <laughs> nice. <gasps> An unidentified young man was found on the morning of three days prior to his death, according to the police. 
Ruled out as a suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed. Blank comments. No claim of his body has been made yet. Oh dear. Lewis. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. I love the sound design of this game. It's really nice. It's very crisp, I guess. Like, all the sounds are so good. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining a timeless luster. Inside it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses smiling brightly. Bro, is that Lewis? This must be the locket he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture... Did he put this in here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Doshio. Um... I'm gonna... Leave the locket for now, because... I don't know, I feel like it... it I'm sure it's just me overthinking, but that comment he made made me feel like it's meant to be there and stay untouched, you know? I think it's best to put it back for now. Hugo's about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. You know what? Maybe I should have taken it. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken the locket. God damn it. Oh boy. What? Water? Oh no. A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly the lights shut off. Oh hell no, get out of there! A scream is heard followed by a myriad of shouts. He was about to call out to Noah, but stops at the site. Uh, no. No, no. No, no, no. You could not pay me enough to do this job. <laughs> but stops at the sight of pale feet before him. Mm -mm. Nope. Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. It appears as a young man, but Hugo knows that it's far from it. No. This very thing is trying to imitate a human form. Oh god, that's so scary. Trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps toward him. Just, it's just like before. The sensation of someone staring at him from within. Oh, I hate it. But this time, it's drawing nearer. Inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Oh, dear Neptune. All of a sudden, the door to the- <laughs> I couldn't say anything but that. I didn't get to read it. I was just so freaked out. Oh man. My bad. My bad. I'm sure you guys saw. I'm sure you guys could read the, the creepy text. The creepy red text. All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gasps desperately for air. His vision blurred and breathing jagged. He staggered toward the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's slightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he's only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly hears the sounds of Colby's relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes toward the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, Effie Force prevents him from doing so. Fuck this! Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Bit by bit, by bit the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made out of? 
Still trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you, just break already! Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing he can grab hold of. However, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out the window, gripping, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet, to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches start to tear away from the wall. Oh no. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hands slip out of his reach. Shit! Clamoring wildly as he loses his grip on the ivy, he crash lands down into a thicket of bushes. Oh no. Oof. Air forced out of him, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. Every time something like this happens in media, I think of, um... Again, this is a very, very, uh, dark movie. It's called The Lovely Bones. But there is a scene where the main character's sister, uh, without spoiling, is uh, running away from someone and she has to jump out a window and she ends up falling really hard in the front yard of the house. And it's just her like trying to catch her breath and heaving. And it's this very intense chase scene. So you're so there's this desperation in wanting her to get up. But she's also like, you know, recovering from a fall directly to her back. It's so scary. Oh, my God. Anyway. I'm reminded of that visual, like, every single time. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake, where this tragedy starts and ends. Mortimer Estate, 12.01 AM. Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby! Noah! Where are you? He hears faintly the sounds of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes toward the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, he, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Let me go! My grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. I don't care. I... I don't want to lose anyone anymore. It's at that instant, Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Hugo! No, don't! Please falls death to his ears. Not even the whines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and disheveled, as if all the life had been drained from him. Surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. A slight jolt from Henry's arm, as if stirred by the mention of Nina. He slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold on him. All of this is my fault. If only... If only I got to Lewis sooner then none of this would have ever happened. Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lewis, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I... 
I've had enough. Lewis is waiting for me. He's waiting for me to come home. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives in after him. Into the abyss. Hugo doesn't get paid enough for this. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body. Like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tips of his fingers. Fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs. Hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck. What? Violently squeezing all the air out of him. He tries desperately to wrench his hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Water filling into his lungs as his vision starts to blur. The cold numbness spreads. Tired and motionless, he watches on as the abyss draws near, swallowing him, embracing him. Let's share this happy ending, together. Okay, so, I got a bad end. That's awesome. Well, let's do the other option. <laughs> Uh, you know what's weird, though, is that I'm sure the other route will give us more context into what's going on here, but with what we just did, I don't really understand why Hugo went through all that trouble just to do that for this guy. He did mention earlier that that um, Henry's eyes kind of look like his own, so maybe they're related in some way. Anyway, we'll take it, we'll take it. I should probably hold on to this for now. You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I... I read what he wrote to you those years ago. He understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lewis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lewis's locket. Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why you don't have to shoulder all that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lewis. All of it. Together. Oh. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Henry had yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. A fool believes in a deserved forgiveness. Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around at Henry's instead. <gasps> oh no. Its arms unnaturally contort around him while its head perches on his shoulder. This thing. This Lewis is no longer pretending to be human. I see, okay. With piercing cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved? We can be forgiven? <gasps> there is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of endings. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him. Into the abyss. Okay. So, let's hope this is different. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body. Like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tips of his fingers. Fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs. Hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. What? Oh no. 
As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck, violently squeezing all the air out from him. He tries desperately to wrench his hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Lewis, where are you, Lewis? It's looking for Lewis? <laughs> Digging deep into his coat's pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten. Holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. <gasps> there you are. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this chance, he drops the chain and kicks with all his might to grab Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to. As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes out one last attempt. As the lights from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before he loses his consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards them, getting closer and closer. And then, everything fades to black. Drifting along with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through wave after wave, not knowing where he's going, or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night's rest? <sighs> it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. <laughs> I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Lewis, you've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. Hmm. With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Whining as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shot right open, he jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pat his back while Colby continues to whine over Hugo. What? What happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness. I swear, you don't listen to a damn word I say. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Lauren? Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to meet. Oh! Behind her stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth has long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer a piercing and vicious green. Only eyes just like Nina's. Uh, hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lewis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And I kept not hurting only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her. The one to blame for all of this. But you, someone that I've never met, still went out of your way to save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hands one last time. I hope that someday, 
you too will overcome it. Over. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Morning. With much fervor and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although by closer inspection, he looks like he's going to combust any minute. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet, and I don't like eating by myself... Did he bring food? Let me guess. Two is better than one. Bingo! Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Ugh, shut it, will you? I swear. If only I hadn't fallen off from the goddamn window, maybe our report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the bacon, he pauses at the mention of Hugo's report. Oh yeah, by the way. Mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer's window? Um. I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is... Why is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bill. And... Surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just called it a day after all of that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it. Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Said that we already went through a lot for them, so this was nothing in comparison. I agree. I agree, Noah. You need to chill out with this one. Ugh. You know what? He's right. After all we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Wait! What about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. Heavily sighing, Noah sets aside the food on his desk and joins the other two at the couch. Oh! <laughs> Stop, you can't just randomly show me cute art and expect me not to cry over it. Oh, damn it. This is so cute. Look at them. Hugo Noah Cannon? Nugo. <laughs> Nugo Cannon? Oh, man. Okay. Ugh, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. Shut it. Colby whines, asking for head scratches. Ugh, sorry, boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad you came along yesterday. <gasps> oh, what's this? Why are you getting chummy with me now? Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If you hadn't saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserved it. You too. A calming silence fills the room as the three fall deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations. Just each other's comfort and sharing the small but rewarding night's rest. Good end, a night's rest. Thank you for playing. Aww. That was very cute. I'm a little confused about what was going on with the family. Like, was it a curse? Was it just Henry bringing everyone down with him because of his uh, guilt and remorse? Like, I, I still don't really understand that. For the, the short little game this was, I think it was very interesting. The atmosphere itself was really good, in my opinion. Also, the characters were very likable. I really like Hugo and Noah's dynamic. It's very cute. Very, very cute. Very much uh, like a excitable puppy and a grumpy cat. What's this? What is this? 
Oh, is this the, the songs? <gasps> Hold on, I need to find the most important song, which it might be this one. You know what? It's fine. I really, I, honestly, a lot of these songs are bangers. This is fine. This will do. It's very, it's very relaxing, very peaceful. Uh, let's look at the concept gallery. Ooh. <gasps> very cool. <gasps> Colby. Or are these the different artists? He's so cute. Oh my god. <sighs> Noah. Puppy. There's nothing more I love than looking at concept art. <laughs> oh, this is canon. They're they're canon, right? This is literally canon. Oh my god, look at them. That's so cute. Oh no, they're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't not fuck him. <laughs> oh my god. So cute. I love the expressions. I, I didn't- I don't know if I mentioned that, but that was one thing I really loved about this. <gasps> oh my god. He's so... Never mind. Oh, I really like how they did her hair. <laughs> Neutral. Surprised. Sleep. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. This is so cool. Oh my god, I love this art. I love it. I love it. That was awesome. Thank you for that. I read the the dev notes on my own time. They were very cute, very, very, very cute. And um, yeah, this was made during a game jam, which is really cool to me. Despite not knowing the specifics, Hugo going out of his way and sacrificing himself for this stranger says volumes about his character. And I really, I really, really want to see more of him and Noah's adventures. And of course, Colby, they're so cute. Oh my god. They're all so cute together. They're like a little, they're like a little family, a little group of, of buddies. But yes, that was Stillwater. I hope you enjoyed, and I really appreciate you watching to the end. I'll definitely be looking out for this team's future games because I'm very interested in what, what, what else they're gonna make. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!